Michelle is a musician with albums released as Everyone Except Me and artist behind the post-apocalyptic webcomic Stray Cats. She's kind, a bit shy, and furiously creative. Henrik is a filmmaker with over two dozen films and TV shows as producer, director, and occasionally host. He also released a couple of music albums. He's bombastic, larger than life, and tenacious almost to a fault. Together, they've been best friends for a decade. This show is awkward. I, I you know, I wish that I had this, this sexy voice, this masculine voice, like all year round. And I don't, obviously. I mean, I, you would know. I mean, it's just slightly higher than it is right now. You I know, mean, I don't it, think it's that I mean, much it's different. Lower. I think it's no. lower. I've got bass. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, in in general. Oh, it, it's a high, yeah. you mean higher sexual, sexy, sexy wise. Sure, totally. That's <laughs> totally what I meant. <laughs> well, um, I mean, as you know, you know, it's New Year's Day. I guess. And, uh, and, and uh, so you know exactly why my voice sounds like this. Because I got a cold yesterday and spent New Year's in pajamas the entire day. At least you had a good reason, so that's good. Well, yeah. Well, I wasn't supposed to be in pajamas the whole day, but I had a photography client cancel with less than an hour to spare on New Year's Eve after he asked me to book him on New Year's Eve. Maybe maybe he just forgot it was New Year's Eve when he asked. Maybe? He might have. I mean, I even told him, I was like, I guess I could do it on New Year's Eve as long as it's this exact time. Mm-hmm. And then, and then of course, you know, the response was like, oh, with people coming in and into town and the holiday. And he didn't even follow it up with like when he would do it, you know, when he would get it done again. <sighs> it was just like, I'll get in touch with you. And I was like, I'd like us to just decide on a day right now. Yeah. Yeah. And and that was the last I heard. And then I told his boss, uh, it's for a real estate group. Mm-hmm. I told his boss and his boss is, was really, really mad. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I guess. Well, you know, I mean, it's a pretty good boss if he's like paying for all your headshots and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And even tried to arrange them. Um, but hurting cats, man, that's what it's like. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. but, <laughs> but I could, I could lament forever about just trying to, uh, do photography gigs being really stressful because people, they, they'll cancel for any, any unknown reason. And always at the last minute too, it's almost never like a few days in advance. It's yeah. always like, it's always like I'm literally like getting dressed and setting up lights and then I get the text. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I understand. Not with photography, with people canceling appointments. Definitely. Yeah. Um, well, you show apartments. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you probably get that. I mean, how, how often do people cancel? Not as often as they don't show up. And that's pretty frequent. And yeah. I do everything I can to make sure to get them to tell me they're not going to show up. Like I try to confirm with them the morning of, and I say things like, Hey, if anything changes, like, please let me know. You know, I do everything I possibly can aside from saying like, please call me when you're underway there, which, cause it doesn't work. Cause I don't live close enough. Cause yeah. it, you know, like, so if it's like, you know, the appointments at 11 and it's 10 50 and I haven't heard from them, it's too late. I'm there. So, <laughs> um, but that's not fun. And my favorite is like, is just reaching out to somebody and then being like, Oh no, I found somewhere. It's like, let me know in advance when you find the place, let me know yeah. that you're canceling so that I don't work my entire day around something that's not going to happen. Yeah. But whatever. Well, I could see them. No, I, I because mean, to them it's your time is literally like not worth anything. Yeah. I mean, I mean, because they're not paying you to look at the apartment. They're only paying you if they want the apartment. Mm-hmm. I think that's why it's so frustrating when it's photography because it's literally like you asked to pay me to do this thing. Yeah, yeah. And then you put it off. But I mean, it, it still think it's crappy to, that they're canceling on you for the apartment. I'm just guessing that that's how they justify it. It's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I guess they didn't really want to see it or something. But like I but then they also like expect me to be available just whenever. Which is my favorite yes. thing too. Like somebody just emailed me and is like, "Are you available tomorrow at twelve? And it's like, or it's like, "I'd like to see you tomorrow at twelve. And it's like, "This is my first communication with you. I don't know anything about you." And like, no, no, it's I'm not available like every second of every day. No, sorry. So yeah, in fact, that guy who canceled yesterday, he asked like if he was like, "What about one thirty? And that was like forty five minutes from <sighs> when we were talking. And I was like, "No, no, that's okay." I, I, I don't know. I can't do that. Like, and the worst part was it wasn't even like, I wasn't even trying to be shitty. It was like, he was like 45 minutes uh, from then. It's like, uh, I could do an hour and a half from right now. Like, and then he's like, Oh, that's too late. I'm like, (sighs) 
you just can't why, why will you try yeah so uh yeah yeah uh, i i i tell people all the time because they ask why i don't do more photography for like uh clients and it's because i swear it's like over a third of them cancel mm-hmm. yeah i get si- i get tired of it yeah it's it's frustrating to you know expect you're gonna have income and you know change your plans around and then have people not care well, and then my my mother was like, "Well, if if they're not somebody you know personally, then you should uh, charge them a deposit." And I'm like, "I agree. These are all people I know personally. <laughs> That's yeah, the worst part. these aren't strangers. Yeah. So yeah, it's like it's like that time I a while back I needed to hire some models, and I had like cash money to pay, and I was hiring models to work on this uh, movie thing I was I was fixing up, and literally the of of like the five models I hired, one only one of them was a professional model. The rest were just uh, women interested in getting into modeling or mm-hmm. whatever. And uh, only one of them was being paid like any substantial amount of money, like over $100. Everybody else was either volunteer or like getting like some gas money or lunch or whatever. Right. And the one person who was booked to get, you know, $150 for three hours of work uh, canceled within like 20 minutes of when they were supposed to be there. Oh, God. And she had the nerve to tell me, uh, you know, it was because she wasn't feeling well. And I was like, she doesn't, I guess she didn't realize that I am uh, friends with her on her personal Facebook. So I saw like pictures of her just out drinking last night. Well, that's why she wasn't feeling well, though. Right, right, right. And and that's, uh, I I used to have a coworker. Have you ever, have you ever had a coworker that you're just amazed at the audacity of? Yeah. (laughs) I had a coworker uh, when I worked at the the old place and uh, at the cable access place, and I just realized I was like, "Why am I? Why am I being skirting around that?" Uh, <laughs> but uh, when I worked there, we hired this one woman, and she—I don't know if she faked her credentials or if she really did go to college and study all the stuff she claimed. But you know, it was a small job; it was like a a, a part time, like maybe fifteen twenty hours a week thing. And all she did, she was an expert in, because of college, she was an expert in, in editing on Macintosh computers, mm-hmm. which is also my expertise, although I did not go to college. So she would hang out in the Macintosh room where there were two computers to edit on, uh, you know, where people could rent them for free. Right. And she would just hang out in there. And I was the only other person that would go in that room regularly and I would go in there and she'd be goofing off. And the best part was I would go in there and she would like still be logged into her Facebook and stuff. Like she didn't log out of anything. Yeah. She was just surfing the net on there, but that's not her audacity. That's like, I mean, you know, people, you know, if there's nothing to do, there's nothing to do. Right. The, the audacity is she, um, she worked there for th- four weeks. And in the oh. first two weeks, she had called in sick more than half of her, uh, days that she was supposed to work. Oh yeah. I know people like that. Yeah. <clears throat> and, but she would wait until the supervisor was gone and tell me over the phone you know, <sighs> that she wasn't going to make it, which I have, all I could do is go, um, okay, but you got to tell our supervisor. Like, I don't, right. I'm not, you know, she would call me, and, but, but her reasons were so good. It was like, uh, it would be like, <laughs> Hey man, how you doing? And I'd be like, I'm good. What's up? And she's like, Oh man, I'm not going to be able to make it in today. Uh, I had some, some bad Thai food earlier. <laughs> that was actually one of the things she said. I had some bad Thai food earlier. I'm not surprised. <laughs> but she missed the day before too, for some reason. Yeah. And then it's like, I had some bad Thai food. Well, then she just stopped showing up entirely. Mm-hmm. But this is like a job where she had to apply and interview and uh, show credentials and, and like, like it's a specialized field. Right. Right. And she just stopped showing up. And the worst part was for me and why I hated my old boss. I hated him for so many reasons, but it took like a week and a half of her literally being for all intents and purposes dead before she was fired. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wish I had, I could be like, wow, I'm really surprised. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Dude, you, you go on. You, you got something. Oh, I mean, I just, I have, you know, coworkers and folks who work under me who just like tell me things. Oh, damn it. I had somebody, I, I'm not even going to specify like what they told me they were in the hospital for, <laughs> but absolutely was not in the hospital. In fact, went on a field trip with her child. Um, oh. Yes. And I know because another person told me. 
um, and had pic- and she had pictures on her Instagram. Um, At least it was educational. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But like, why are you, why are you pulling this? And then, I mean, once you find that out, it's like, I don't trust anything you've ever said to me yeah. ever. Um, but yeah. And it, it, it still like just took forever for her to get fired. Even after we're like, I'm pretty sure that she's just lying and, and telling us that she's in mortal danger when she's like just hanging out with her kid. So, <laughs> which is, which is pretty annoying. I mean, we're talking about, you know, we're not talking about a life or death job either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's interesting. My mother works, you know, in corporate America and uh, it's fascinating to me how difficult it is to fire anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you always yeah. hear about like, you know, that they, they don't care about us. They just whatever and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, actually it has to go through like three departments before they can fire somebody. So, cause where I worked before they fired me, um, <clears throat> they lucked out that even though I worked, uh, 30 hours a week for three or two years or whatever there, uh, I wasn't technically a full-time employee, so they didn't have to run it by anybody to fire me. The boss could just unilaterally fire me. Wow. Even though we had a, uh, it's a non, not for profit. So they had a board of directors and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I should have technically been put in front of them and, you know, explained why I should be fired. Of course, you know, the funny thing is a lot of people came to me after I was fired and were like, you should have done that or you still can. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, you know, I don't think I ever want to work there ever again. Yeah, but you could have done it and then quit. I mean, yeah, but the time. Yeah, but it's other people's time, too, that you're inconveniencing. <laughs> okay. I mean, when you put it that way, I kind of, I get where you're coming from. But, yeah, no, I would have just been like, that's fine. It's over. You know? Like, yeah. That's what I, I said. I was like, that's, you know, that's fine. I'm good. Yeah. I'm yeah. good. That was a terrible job. Uh, I yeah. mean, just the treatment. Um, mm-hmm. I remember um, my uh, one of my coworkers after a particularly bad reaming from my boss, and don't get me wrong, I'm sure I wasn't the perfect employee by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, but uh, at one point, one of my coworkers came up to me after my boss had reamed me and just went, man, he really has it out for you. And I that was the moment I realized I wasn't gaslit. Like, that was the moment I realized that I actually, like, I thought I was just being overly sensitive, <laughs> or maybe it was because I hated the guy, because I did not like my boss very much. Yeah. And then to have somebody walk up and go, man, he really has it out for you. I was like, oh my God, it's real. Yeah. Yeah. That's always, that's always nice, you know? Yeah, nice. Yeah, no, it's nice to to know that you're not like like crazy. I guess. I yeah, no, I mean, I could still be crazy. I don't know if that's like certifiable evidence, but yeah, no, I see what you. I agree. It was very relieving to realize I hadn't just kind of made it all up in my head. Um, yeah, oof, that was so bad. That was such a bad time. Yeah, (laughs) those were very bad times. Um. But, uh, but no, I was just, I, I, yeah, I still sometimes think about that, that coworker. Cause I'm just amazed calling into work. Oh, I had some bad Thai food, man. It's like, um, what? Yeah. Yeah. And I have people who like, I, I feel like you were going to say something. No, no, please. Um, I have people who will like be like, I don't know. I just got to do something tomorrow. Can you excuse the absence? And it's like, no, what? <laughs> What do you mean? Like, you just got a thing that you have to do all of a sudden. Like, you you knew this schedule, and you could actually, where I work, you can change it. You have time to change it, as long as you're, yeah. it's not like 24 hours in advance. I mean, more than that. So, it's like, what, what do you mean? Like, you just have this thing. And it's like, it's okay if you don't want to come in, but like, don't, like, you just get in trouble. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I hate when, when people are like that too, and they act like it's the first time they've asked you to do something like that too. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what really bothers me is, is it's one thing when somebody asks you to like, kind of pull a, uh, like questionable favor and it's the first time they've ever, it's ever been brought up ever. Mm-hmm. And you're like, um, uh, okay, I guess I could help you out. But like, I, I'm, I'm used to the people like when I worked at Spencer's gifts, like <laughs> people were constantly pulling crap. But, um, Yeah. <laughs> I, I just I just think those people who ask you for those questionable favors, they're the, they just always do that. That's it's not like when you you say like, oh, OK, just this once they're going to they're going to like never do it again. You know, I would you never think anybody. Is, oh, sorry. Good. Uh, I don't know. What were you going to say? I think you were going to answer my question. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I would I was just going to say I would never like if I in 
every instance that I've not come to work for a reason that is stupid, like I just don't want to go to work today. I just say, Hey, I'm not coming to work today. You know, I don't, I don't say like, Oh, because I'm sick or any of that stuff. (laughs) Like that way when I'm actually sick, people will believe me. Yeah. Yeah. You won't be the, the girl who cried wolf or the girl who cried sinus infection. Yes. Which is even worse. Which should be bad because I don't actually get sinus infections and they'd find out somehow. <laughs> they'd know. They'd know. <laughs> I uh, I remember when I worked at my old job, um, one of the most frustrating things was actually vacation time <laughs> because you accrued it. So, uh, you still there? <laughs> What just happened? Uh, I'm sorry. I I drank some tea and it like and I choked on it. So I tried to turn off the microphone for a second so I didn't cough. And- <laughs> I heard the like struggle with the tea first. That's why I got worried. <laughs> but uh, but no. Um, um, but one of the biggest problems was that you accrued your vacation time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was a certain percentage of hours worked. You got a percentage of hours vacation. Right. And that's great in theory, I guess. But the problem was I would write my boss an email and be like, Hey, how much time do I have accrued? Because I'd like, to, I, I have a few days I'd like to schedule off in the near mm-hmm. future. And he'd reply back and be like, you have to keep track of that. You have to keep track of that. How? Like you what? need you need to keep track of that. Like on your on your calendar, you need to keep track of how many hours you work, and then you'll be able to you'll be able to figure out how many. Well, so I see what he was getting at because it was something like five percent. I think it was like an easy number to figure out, right? Mm-hmm. So I start keeping track of it. Then I write him and go, "Hey, so um, I'm going to take off this day and this day a month from now um, with my accrued time." And his response, you know what his response was, right? No. Well, I'm going to have to take a look and see how much time time you've accrued. Yeah, Yeah, I'm going to have to stop and take a look at how much time you've accrued because I'm not sure uh, if you have that much time. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's like taxes. It's like taxes. Yeah. Have you seen that that, that, that meme that says – that's like, um, so how much do I pay you in taxes? Oh, well, you need to figure that out. Oh, so like I give as much as I I think is fair? Oh, no, there's a very specific number you have to give. And if you don't guess it on your own, you go to jail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that one. But I I remember just being like, are you serious? So it's like all this extra work for fucking what? For fucking what? Yeah. So that he could just do the math anyway. I don't know. Anyway. Um, (laughs) I like when I have a sore throat because it sounds, I sound so much more uh, like exacerbated. Okay. What am I going to do? You know, (laughs) I can't can't pull off a voice like that. Sometimes, have you ever had a a, like a really bad rasp and wished it would stay forever? Yeah, definitely. You've just been like, man, if this was me, I'd I'd be be so so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, This is actually not my favorite. When I have like a really terrible cold, I end up with like an incredibly bassy voice. Mm hmm. Like just a wow bassy voice, and I'm just like, if that was me, I'd be Kanye West. Like I could yeah. just, I could take on the world with that level of awesome raspy voice. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, the things, the things I have to think about. Because if I don't, somebody else will, and that would be very sad. <laughs> But, uh, but so, so, uh, we, we already talked about my new year's, you know, how exciting it was. I, mm-hmm. I was in my pajamas. Um, I mean, that was a plus of that guy canceling was I just didn't have to, I just took, I literally went from looking at my phone to laying on the couch and taking a nap because I wasn't right. feeling very well. Cause I had a sore throat on Christmas and I was like, Oh God, I must be getting a cold. And then I woke up the next day and it was better. Mm-hmm. And then my throat got progressively better. And then, uh, Monday, I barely had a sore throat at all. And then Tuesday I was coughing like crazy huh. and, and I had like a really raw throat. In fact, if you listen to, to the, the new year's Eve weekly spooky, it's so funny because I recorded the story narration, uh, on Monday and I recorded the intro and outro the next morning mm-hmm. and you can hear the difference. Oh, really? You can hear that I'm getting a cold. I kept having to uh, pause the recording and like hack and cough and drink water and then start oh. again, you know, just to keep my voice, you know. Yeah. Because 
weekly spooky is a little bit more intense than this is. You know, I can, I can talk on here and be like, Oh, I need a drink of water. Mm -hmm. Uh, but on weekly spooky, it's like you pause, drink water, start again. There's no breaks. There's no, you don't want to hurt the immersion, Mm -hmm. I guess. Um, so, (laughs) well, that's, that's good. Thanks for telling me because I'm going to listen to it after we stop talking to each other and I'll know. I'll know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think you'll, I think you'll like that one. It, it, it's very, it's very New York. It's New York. It takes place in New York city in 1979. Awesome. It's, it's got a good flavor to it. And I mean, it, of course it ends on times square cause it's a new year's Eve story. And so, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, but, uh, did I ever tell you about like on new year's Eve that, uh, people were parking like on the street in my neighborhood when I lived in New Jersey to go to times square. Like, <laughs> That's how far I, I lived what? in a neighborhood 30 minutes. I lived in a neighborhood 30 minutes outside of New York city in New Jersey. I mean, you, you visited my neighborhood. Yeah. You know, yeah. 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. You're not in, close in to New York traffic. city. It's not like I mean, it for, for perspective. It's not like we're talking about he, him living in like Jersey city or something. This is not, this is not really near New York city at all. No. Now the, the big benefit of living where I live though, was that you could get on one bus to get to New York city. Which is why, yeah, they were doing that, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and apparently that was the furthest you could live and get on one bus to New York City. Mm-hmm. That was what I was always told about my neighborhood because I knew, like, in my neighbors and stuff, almost all of them worked in New York City. Wow. And they, and they were like, wow. and they were like, yeah, this is, like, as far as you can get before you have to, like, take a bus to a different bus to get to New York. Mm-hmm. This one, you just get on the bus and, the, the oh, God, what is that? What's that service called? It's been forever since I lived in Jersey. Um What's Jersey's bus service called? Like uh, I can't remember. Um, I I lived in a suburban area that didn't have a oh, lot yeah, of bus yeah, service, I so I. Oh, well. Uh, it, well, I mean, it's uh, it, New Jersey District of Transportation was the dis- the thing, the transportation thing. So I don't, but I don't know what the buses are called. Sorry, yeah, I can't remember now. I mean, it's been like 11, 12 years. So, but uh, but when I lived in Jersey, yeah, my little neighborhood on New Year's Eve, there would be cars lining the street with that's, different like state out of state license plates. That's so crazy. And it's, it's like, I mean, I guess it's, yeah, it's New York. So, cause I was going to say, it's not like people do that around my neighborhood and then they commute into Philly from here, but it's not the same thing at all. Well, this is just on New Year's Eve, which I mean, obviously, you know, when like hundreds of thousands mm-hmm. of people probably gather there, yeah, um, yeah. I always, I always joke that people park up to the PA line to get to, to, get to <laughs> Times Square because I just, I just couldn't believe that though. I just look up and down my neighborhood streets and I was like, where'd all these cars come from? And my neighbor was like, it's New Year's man. They're all, they all went to Times Square. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? That's, I, yeah, it really is. So, but, uh, but that was my roundabout way of asking you. So what did you do with your New Year's? Uh, Dick, not, not anything super special. Um, I worked for most of the day, Mm -hmm. um, because I don't care. And And it was a Tuesday. And yeah, it was a Tuesday and I work on Tuesdays. Um, and, uh, then I like came home and I got some Chinese food Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, it was it was okay. It was fine. And I just kind of hung out. I watched some Twilight Zone for a while. Um, Good. And then I watched Kill a Kill, and that was really it. So huh. did you stay up? Did you stay up till midnight? Um, I was going to. I just kind of like <laughs> fell asleep, and then I woke up <laughs> yeah. at like twelve oh five, and I was like, okay. And I went. Oh, that counts. Yeah, yeah. But um, my neighborhood. Um, I don't like. You know, like I live in an area, I mean, obviously fireworks are, I guess, legal here. So I hear fireworks sometimes, but it sounded like there were like choreographed firework displays going off from about 11 to 1230. I have no idea where they were, but there was lots of fireworks. So we had a ton of just neighborhood fireworks going off. Yeah, I mean, Um, I assume maybe they were but they just sounded like so many of them. And also like, not the, like, maybe it's gunshots, but like, this is a firework display somewhere that I can't see type thing. (laughs) See where, where I live. uh, Yeah. We were definitely, it was just people throwing fireworks, shooting off bottle rockets and stuff. So I, I didn't get a chance to celebrate quite the way I normally do, but I actually ended up having a really nice one anyway. Good. Um, Good. Because my antenna broke, so I can't get antenna TV right now. Oh, um, I can't. So I couldn't watch the ball drop. Yeah. What channel? So I, oh, sorry. I don't even know what channel that's on. It is. Is, is it on ABC? I think it's NBC. Okay. I don't know. So I could have watched it because I can't get ABC because my Christmas decorations are messing up my antenna. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, though. I'm sorry. 
Oh, you're from, no, no. But so, so I couldn't watch the ball drop, which is fine because I literally tune in every year like two minutes before the ball right. drops. Right. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So uh, I actually downloaded an app that gave me a countdown oh. so that I could keep track. Um, and Rachel and I watched a bunch of movies because Rachel has the exact same cold. We actually don't know who gave who the cold because yeah. it's just all happened at once. Yeah, maybe you had it um, simultaneously from someone. Rachel thinks she gave me the cold because I got better from my sore throat and then got oh, worse. Maybe. Yeah. But it's whatever. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so, cause we had tried to make plans with some friends. Um, and then we were like, maybe we'll go to their house and visit for a minute. And then we're both sick. So I remember <clears throat> when that guy canceled my, um, photo session, I texted her at like two o'clock and I was like, do you want to just come over right now and put on pajamas and we'll just figure it all out? Like, we'll just, and literally she came over and like, we like both took a nap on opposite couches and then like got up and watched movies and stuff. It was really nice. That is nice. Um, so when we ended up watching four movies, we were like oh. so into it. Um, we just kept, I mean like, and, I, and it's funny cause I was like, man, and we were so tired. We both agreed. We were like, okay. And at like 1205, we'll just take some cold medicine and go to bed. Mm -hmm. And then instead once new year's, you know, once we did our countdown, we were both like amped. So we were like, let's watch another movie. So we watched one more movie and then we went to sleep. That's um, nice. Yeah, it was super nice. Um, it's just, it's rough because New Year's, you know, I spent a few of them like totally, like feeling totally alone, mm -hmm. not just alone, but feeling totally alone. Yeah. And I've kind of fallen out of my tradition uh, on New Year's that I had for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. So now I'm not really sure what to do. And it's a drinking holiday. So, you know, it's not really for us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, for people who don't know, we don't drink alcohol. Yeah. I don't so, talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, and I don't, I have no fault of that. I think that's why I don't, I mean, I'm sure I bet you probably feel the same way. Like I appreciate being invited to a party. If, if a friend can tell me like, it's going to be mostly all about drinking mm -hmm. then I can be like, Oh, well then thank you for the invitation. I probably won't go or I'll just be there briefly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to be, yeah. I mean, that's nice. Um, I don't even have friends at this point. <laughs> you just done talking yeah no i figured long I, silence. I just pause there for a second um i didn't even have friends that like aren't like i'd go to a party and it isn't just going to be everybody's totally drunk or totally high so it's just like yay that'd that'd be fun for <laughs> Well, I mean, now it's a lot different for me because I'm, you know, in my thirties. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like, it's not as big of a thing yeah. that I'm going to get invited to a drinking party. But I also get if somebody's like, we're having a new year's party. I'm like, I get what's going to probably be going on. Yeah. And I'm okay with it. Like, I think it's fine if that's like, if it's a drinking holiday, mm -hmm. I think that's totally okay. Like I'm the one who's different, right. not them. Right. So I'm not like going to be mad, but you know, at the same time, if I throw a, a, a party for new year's, it's obviously not going to be a drinking party. Right. It's going to be something different. I'm, I'm debating, I debated throwing a new year's party this year, but I'm glad I didn't cause I ended up being sick, right. but like, I'm always so exhausted from my Christmas party. <laughs> it's, it's so close, right? You know, yeah. Or so, so, it, you know, but, uh, but we, but so my main point was just that, um, I, don't need to do a whole lot for new year's. I'd like to be around at least a person or two mm -hmm. if I can. And I'd like to watch stuff and kind of relax. And, uh, I have to count down that those are like my rules. Okay. I have to, I have to literally ring in the new year or else I'm pissed. Okay. Like, I don't understand when people are like, Oh, uh, the kids are in bed and, uh, my wife's in bed and I'm just watching movies and I'm like, what they're actually going to, sleep through midnight on purpose mm -hmm. yeah i don't i don't get that because to me uh even though it's well that's exactly it it's not even though it's symbolic it is symbolic it doesn't really matter that a new year is started really right you know aside from taxes it doesn't really matter but i like the idea of of the concept that i'm going to celebrate the fact that we're doing it again mm-hmm you know, um, and I, you know, I mean, as I've, I, I, nobody can get me to shut up about this. I believe that any excuse to celebrate is a good excuse to celebrate. So you should celebrate every chance you get. Yeah. So even if it was just literally, you know, Rachel and I sitting on my couch with a movie paused, you know, counting down from 10 and then saying happy new year to each other and petting the dogs. Like that was fine. That was perfectly acceptable. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, I used to bang pots and pans together. <laughs> You're one of those, huh? <laughs> Well, so tell me, so <clears throat> when I was a kid, the way New Year's went was there was sparkling cider mm -hmm. 
And which uh, was another thing I forgot to mention. And I always have a bottle of sparkling cider, which I did. Um, but New Year's, there's spark- there was sparkling cider when I was a kid. And there was always like a meat and cheese tray. Okay. Um, because my mother was given it from a client at work every year. And she would just hand it off to the kids. Um, and we would eat meat and cheese and, and do this stuff. And my mom was the one who told me, like, you know, grab pots and pans and smack them together. Yeah. What was New Year's like in your household? Um, so first of all, my neighbors across the street used to get pots and pans, and and they, it, I don't, they were they were fine, like they weren't annoying or anything. <laughs> but I just fine. like, yeah, but I just that's that's my experience with that. Um, but yeah, no, <laughs> um, a couple of years we visited my cousins, but that really didn't stick. So most mm-hmm. mostly we just kind of hung out and watched the Twilight Zone and um, like ate ate like hors d'oeuvres. And had pina yeah. coladas, that kind of thing. Ooh. Yeah, but like not with alcohol in them because we were children. <laughs> um, oh, that's, that was about to be really exciting. Yeah, well, like, yeah. Yeah, my parents used to habitually get us drunk mm. when we were little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's even better because your mom listens to this. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you guys, that doesn't sound that different from what we did. Yeah. Yeah, because we always stayed home. Uh, my mother has this mortal fear of drivers on New Year's Eve. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which apparently I, I read, uh, actually, the day, the night before Thanksgiving is the real dangerous da- night. That's, that is the night of the drunk drivers. That's interesting. I wonder why that is. Um, I would guess because of the delightful element of life known oh, by many as and, extended family. Oh, okay. I understand. So I'm assuming, yeah. So we have more people celebrating Thanksgiving than they are celebrating Christmas. So that's going to be the bigger one. And, but like, but so they're preparing themselves by getting drunk or are they like at their family's house and they're like, oh no, I have to do this another day. I have to go get drunk. <laughs> well, if I had to guess, um, because I know that bar stuff is way up around Christmas, mm-hmm. but I think that Christmas is a time of more obligations mm. uh, as to okay. where Thanksgiving. It's like, you just need to be there on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Because I've talked to back when I played uh, music shows all the time, every bartender, every bar owner I ever spoke to said that the biggest night of the year is the night before Thanksgiving. Okay. They sell so much booze and it doesn't matter what's going on at the bar. They don't have to have a show. Mm -hmm. They don't have to have a a sporting event on the TV. Um, As opposed to like on New Year's, they're like, yeah, if we get the right band or whatever, we'll do great because people will come to the party. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, on, on Thanksgiving Eve... They just pound it. I feel like it'd be hard to get plastered on Christmas Eve because there are so many people who have like a thing to do on Christmas Eve or a mass to go to or what, whatever, depending on how traditional your family yeah, is. Yeah, that makes sense. But mm-hmm. Thanksgiving is so secular, too. It's like, all right, I made it to my hometown. Now I'm going to get wasted. <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, I in, so, I, in some capacity, I can understand that. Definitely. Well, I mean, it, it, we can only understand so much of that. I mean, yes. not, neither of us have ever sat down and went, okay, it's time to get wasted. Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I've, I've almost felt that way when I was in horrific pain, when I was on all that Vicodin before my yeah. surgery. I, there were moments where I was like, all right, it's time to just check out. Let's mm-hmm. take these pain pills. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but no, uh, yeah. So, but I'm glad it sounds like you had a pretty nice New Year's. Yeah. I mean, it was it was okay. I would have liked to not just randomly fall asleep, um, oh. but that's what happens because I got up super early yesterday. So that's well, and that's a double edged sword because that means you were relaxed, which is kind of the goal. Uh, I I could you believe that I only fall asleep when I'm relaxed <laughs> to some degree. I I mean I I I guess, but it's not like it's just like my body's like okay, we're done. And it just shuts off. Thanks for listening. You can email us at this show is awkward at gmail.com or go to awkwardshow.com or whatever. See you next time.